Welcome to Introduction to Accounting, Preparing for User's Perspective. This particular video should help you understand inventory costing systems and cost flow assumptions. This is a little practice set. The student who asked the question wanted to know how to compute ending inventory and the cost of goods sold for a period of time for a perpetual inventory system. With that in mind, I've given this full solution file in my course so that he can look at that, um, but uh, I, I think you can also follow along with what I'm talking about here, so hopefully this will uh, be of use to you. The basic idea in this problem is I tell you how much inventory you start with, then you add some more inventory, and then you sell some. The reason we don't have the cost and total cost here is, is because we haven't computed it yet based on the cost flow assumption. We could be using first in, first out, where we would expense these first, last and first out where we would expense these first, or a moving average which would take the average of this total cost divided over the, five, over the five units and that would be the average cost at which it sells. So this particular video is going to work through a, an average cost system under the perpetual uh, method. So uh, this is called moving average. It's moving average because the average gets recomputed every time you purchase some more inventory. So let's go on to the solution. Up at the top of the solution page, you'll see the solution for the FIFO approach, the LIFO approach, and the moving average approach. So this is the one we're going to be focusing on here. Down below that, you'll see that um, we've computed the cost of goods sold for the period, the ending inventory at the end of the period. We've also computed the gross margin in dollar terms, the gross margin as a percentage, because gross margin is made up of the gross margin percentage is your gross margin dollars divided by your net sales revenue that gives you this 49 percent the computation of markup percentage on cost you take the gross margin and you divide it by the cost you can ignore the negative because that's just being deducted on the income statement so you just take this 8.35 divided by the cost of goods sold 8.65 and that tells you the markup in other words this seventeen dollars is seven is ninety seven percent higher than eight point six five maybe that helps so let's go down and look at the calculations here are the calculations for FIFO you can look at those if you want LIFO you can look at those that you want but we want to go on to the moving average key point is this idea of moving when you bought two units each unit was a unit cost of one so the total cost of inventory, imagine a basket of inventory, the total cost of that basket is $2. If you take the total $2 cumulative cost divided by the number of units, it comes out to be $1 per unit. Well, that was pretty easy because there was only one layer of inventory. But then you buy three more units, but these are coming in at $2. So there's more units coming in at $2 than there are at $1. So you can imagine this average will be a little bit closer to 2 than it is to 1. The total cumulative cost at this stage is the original $2 from the last layer. Add the new $6, so your total cumulative cost is 8. But how many cumulative units do you have? You have 5. So you take 8 divided by 5. That gives a moving average cost of buck six. So then when you sell the two units, you sell the two units at a unit moving average unit cost of $1.06. The total cost of goods sold for that sale is $3.20. You have to then take your prior total cost on hand less what you just got rid of and this is the remaining cost of inventory on hand with three cumulative units remaining. You'll notice if you take this remaining cost 4.8 divided by 3 it's still a buck six. In other words when you sell inventory the moving average cost does not change. It's only when you bring in new costs at a different unit cost than what was in there that the moving average does change. So we're sitting here with three units, buck six each, total cumulative cost of $4.80. We bring in two more units at $2.50 each. Once again, you're going to see that this is going to pull up the average, isn't it? You bring those in, that increases the cumulative cost by five bucks. We're now up to $9.80 total cumulative cost. The total cumulative units was the three we used to have, plus two, we're up to five. The moving average cost is the $9.80 divided by five, buck 96. We buy some more, go through the same process. We add now 
three more units at four dollars that's going to pull this average up even higher because we're adding twelve dollars of cumulative costs now we're twenty one dollars and eighty cents in cumulative costs we added three units and so now we're eight units cumulative units twenty one dollars and eighty cents divided by eight gives us a moving average unit cost now of two dollars and seventy two point five cents in other words two dollars seventy three cents really we then sell two units. Those get sold at a cost of 2.725. The revenue, obviously, would be the sales price, which I'm not showing here. And we pull that out of the cumulative cost. So that what's remaining in cumulative cost is six units at $16.35. Total cost to get sold will be this $3.20 from these two units and this $5.45 from these two units. So total cost of goods sold, as you can see, is $8.65 for four units. We pull that information up into here. And as you can see, total cost of goods sold, $8.65. Total ending inventory, $16.35. So we started with $2 of cost. We added $23 in purchases. So these are all the purchases for the month. Gets up to $25 of goods available for sale. We then expense $8.65 to get ending inventory of $16.35. So you see this eight, these four units had a cost of $8.65, but the revenue, which came from the problem over here, right? We showed that the unit sales price was $3.50 for that and $5 for that. The total revenue was $17. Okay. And we then pull that down into our little analysis. $17 revenue, $8.65 cost of goods sold. So the margin on that was $8.35. $8.35 divided by the net sales revenue gives you a 49% gross margin percentage. That means 49 cents of every sales dollar makes it past the expense of cost of goods sold and into margin. So 49 cents of every sales dollar is available to pay for your rent, your utilities, your salaries, all that other stuff. Now your gross margin percentage, well your, your market percentage on cost, you take your cost, that's going to be the denominator, and your gross margin, 835, that's the numerator, so 835 divided by 8.65, that's 97 cents. So the markup, that means you take this cost, 8.75, and add 97% on top of that, you're going to get to 17 bucks. Hope that helped you, and aloha.